The Crow is back with a brand new film. First we had Point Break, then we had Roadhouse, and here we are with The Crow. What could possibly go right? Well, I went out and watched this uh, film, and I'm gonna tell you about it right now in a spoiler-free review. Let's crow! I mean, go. <laughs> Kill me. First things first, I'm the realist. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. I want to apologize 1000% for the crow's feet. I went to two films last night. It was a late night. I saw The Crow and then I saw Blink twice. If you're interested in my thoughts on that film, I would love if you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. You can even like this video and comment. That helps the algorithm or something. Who knows anymore? But I do know this. The Crow, 2024, is ass. I did have some friends that were cautiously optimistic about this one. I don't know why, I, I thought it looked pretty bad from the trailers, but I was willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Give it a shot. This movie stars Bill Skarsgård as Eric, aka The Crow. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. And the actress who plays his love interest is pretty similar to AKA, it's FKA Twigs. FKA. Fka? Fka! Fka! Like a crow. She's playing a character named Shelly, and right out of the gates, this movie's triggering the living hell out of me. I believe Twigs comes from a music background. My buddy told me that. I, I have no idea who she is. This is the first time I've seen her, and hopefully the last on screen, because she's a mouth breather. There are certain things that just drive me up a wall bananas, Gwen Stefani, and one of them is mouth breathers. And not only is she mouth breathing, she's got the mouth half open, and these giant teeth are just shot out of a cannon in front of me. The lip kind of goes up. And so the whole time she's on screen, I am completely distracted by this. It's a superficial thing, but I know she can close the mouth completely. This is both the director's fault and her. It's absolutely atrocious to look at. Unfortunately, Bill Skarsgård is not much better. I've really enjoyed him in other films, especially as Pennywise, but in this particular instance, I thought he was completely miscast as Eric. I'm looking for an edgy, dark, emo badass, but what I'm getting from him is a budget version of Jared Leto's Joker, who was already a budget Joker to begin with. Skarsgård's got these stupid stick-on tattoos all over his body, which include a question mark next to the ear, a triangle teardrop under the eye. He is one step removed from having damaged written across the forehead. And his performance in this is so puppy dog pathetic. He has this, this kind of whiny, pouty, mamby-pamby voice the whole time. Like, oh, I need to save my Shelly. Uh, what am I doing here? If it hasn't been painstakingly obvious, I hate this film. <laughs> But what can you expect from it? What's going on in this almost two hour chore to get through? Let's go to the cinematography in the original because we have to compare them. They're both called The Crow. This is very much a remake. It's not a sequel. It's not a prequel. It's not a sidequel. It's not a truffle. It's not a fuckwell. It's its own thing redoing the movie franchise. And I hope it doesn't get past this. The original Crow had so much style to it. It was like a precursor to The Matrix. Emo is all hell. Brandon Lee had that badass curly black hair coming down. He had the white face paint on. The overall look of the movie was just so unique. Even if you don't like The Crow, at least it's distinct and you can recognize it from a mile away. This new one, no style. It feels like a straight to streaming film. It's a streamer at heart. This is not the version Dwight K. Schrute's taken to the island with him, I can tell you that much. Dwight, all time favorite movie. The Crow. The plot is same-ish. Obviously, it's focused on the love story, which is gonna take about an hour to get through, and this love story is miserable. There's no chemistry between these two leads. They're not likable characters in the slightest, especially uh, that actress, TSA, or whatever her name is, who plays Babs Bunny. Her acting leaves a lot to be desired. And again, Skarsgård is giving us nothing. He's just a stock, lame character who, for some reason, can't get over the loss of a horse. <laughs> I'll get more into the horse play later on in a spoiler video down the road. So again, su su subscribe. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. The only other notable actor is Danny Houston, who is always a villain. Like every time I've ever seen him, he's a bad guy. So as soon as he shows up, it's okay, there's, there's the boss of the film. But back to the story, these two fall in love, there's tragedy, and then the rest of the movie is, of course, the revenge tale. Eric dies going to this limbo world. They didn't give it a name. I'm going to call it Croatia. And then he's reborn anew. Uh, a crow rising from the ashes gives him super crow powers. 
The problem is we don't see this shit until the final act. There's almost no action in this movie except for one prominent sequence that lasts around three or four minutes at the opera, which is kind of a ripoff of the Fifth Element opera scene, obviously taken to a much bigger extreme. But the opera scene in the Fifth Element's way cooler. There are scant fight scenes here and there, but they last only a few seconds and they're just not interesting to watch. If you're looking for a violent, gory film, there definitely is violence and some gore, bones breaking and getting mended back together, gunshot wounds. And then again, that final opera fight has a lot of swords going through eyeballs, slashing off hands. It does get intense. It's, it's cartoony looking though. It doesn't feel very realistic, obviously. I will give it props for that one fight scene though. It's pretty cool and creative not enough to go watch this movie and drop your hard-earned cash for a cash grab remake that's for sure watch the clip on youtube when it's inevitably shat out in a couple weeks if you're going to remake something you better bring your a game because everyone's always going to compare and contrast the differences what works better what's worse does it pay respect to the original is it doing its own thing completely the crow doesn't attempt to do anything unique or different it just exists and as far as remakes crow it's on the bad side of things. There is a theme song for this new movie. It's used the entire film. You, you cannot go five minutes without hearing it. And it also has a very generic sound to it like AI built it. Listen, the best these crappy movies have to offer is it gets new audiences, new generations to check out the original flicks. Even if they don't hold up very well, at least they can appreciate what came before and the uniqueness they brought to the table. This movie is another instance of Easy Come, Easy Crow. You're going to forget about it in a week, and then in a month, you won't even know that this movie exists. People will always reference the original, it will always be the one that's remembered, and this thing is just completely irrelevant. Overall, a misfire across the board. Let me know your thoughts, though. Did you make it through this film without falling asleep? Impressive. Did you like the lame-ass story and chemistry between the leads? Did you think the action that was almost non-existent was really cool? Or are you like me and you thought, wow, why am I even here watching this shit? Let me know. Please, again, like the video, subscribe, share it, do whatever you need to do to get the message out that I have a channel on YouTube. I have a second channel as well, Adam Does Rants, where I complain up a storm about first world problems in a hopefully comedic fashion for you to enjoy. That's the end game for that channel, to get you to laugh, often at my own expense. If you love what I'm doing, become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care. Gotta crow.